Okay, this is a little video to answer a question uh, regarding the relationship between roll center and camber gain uh, or higher camber angle. Um, essentially what I got here is a, uh, a depiction of the uh, TRF-417 um, with various different mounting locations or positions for the upper camber link and also for the lower suspension arm inner mounting point. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at what happens when we change the roll center and what that does to the tire camber as the chassis rolls. So first, before we do anything, I want to just explain this value here, camber gain. Okay, so the camber gain value is measured as a vertical movement of the arm. So right now it is set for a three millimeter movement. So if I move the outer part of the arm up three millimeters or conversely drop the chassis by three millimeters, that's how much the camber will change. So if I have 1.5 degrees of camber on this tire, if I move the chassis down uh, three millimeters, <clears throat> I would end up with 1.83 uh, camber. If this value goes negative, um, you would end up with actually losing camber. So the camber value would go from minus, well in this case minus 2, to something less than minus 2. Uh, normally you don't have camber loss. That's not a, uh, a normal uh, geometry that you would set up. Normally you're in a situation where you've got camber gain. So if we take this arm and we move it down to this lower left corner, that's going to give us the most camber gain we can get with this particular suspension setup. So now you can see we've moved to 0.8. So if I take my chassis and I deflect it down, uh, I'm going to get go from 2 degrees here to 2.8 degrees of camber for that small movement of the chassis. <laughs> the other thing that moving the upper link does is it changes your roll center. So you can't change one thing without affecting the other is essentially what it boils down to. So the other way you can <laughs> change your roll center with having minimal effect on your, on your camber gain is to use the lower inner hinge pin point. So if we move this, right now I've got it set fairly high. We're at uh, uh, 1.5 millimeters uh, below ground. So if I change the angle of this arm so that it is more of a down angle that's going to lower my roll center so if I click this to go down I've essentially what I've done here is I've moved from that point to this point which <clears throat> represents two millimeters of shim difference between the two which is quite a bit so now my uh, roll center is at minus six millimeters below ground okay so let's have a look and see what happens when we do all or to the dynamics of the situation when we uh, uh, change our roll center and what that does to our camber. So I'm just going to save this. <laughs> I'm going to do all this within the dynamic section because it's a lot easier way to uh, see what's going on. So we're set up here same way as we were before. We've got the upper camber link in the inner uppermost position and we've got the lower arm in the highest uh, shimming point so we've got our roll center is high it's 1.5 millimeters below ground and our camber gain is 0.33 so we don't have to apply that because that's already there so let's just run this and we'll do some graphing and see what happens so first thing, actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the roll angle versus lateral cheek. So this is the chassis roll angle that it has gone through in this uh, in this simulation. So we've got a total roll here of 1.78 degrees for a 2G lateral acceleration. So now let's see what happens when we lower our roll center. We're just going to look at chassis roll angle here. And we're going to apply that. And run this again. So now let's graph it. So now instead of we were at 1.78, now we have a total roll angle 
of 1.87. So we slightly increase the amount of roll and the reason being is we have lowered our roll center. So we've increased the rolling moment on the chassis. The rolling moment is the distance from your sprung mass center of gravity to your roll center. So the bigger that distance is, the greater the chassis roll is going to be. And that means there's more force that the springs and anti-roll bars have to resist because essentially what you have is the uh, uh, forcing function, if you want to use that term, is your roll, your rolling moment, which is center of gravity of the swarm mass to the, to the roll center. And that force is resisted by your springs and anti-roll bars. Okay, so let's just go back here again to the beginning. Let's put this back up, and now let's see what happens to our camber game, our camber angles. So let's run this again, and now we're just going to look at our camber. So this is the tire camber as a function of lateral G. So the angle that the wheel center line of the tire makes with the ground as a function of lateral G, or conversely, as the chassis rolls. So right now, with this configuration, we have a ending camber value relative to the ground of 0.39 degrees negative. If we look at this here, and we'll slow it down a little bit, you can see the, sh the tire almost stands up vertically. Okay, so if we now change the roll center, we're going to move our roll center down. So now we're back down at our 6.1 degrees. And we apply that and run it. Let's see what happens to our camber. So we were at minus 0.39. And now we've gone up a fair amount because our chassis is now rolling more. So now we're at minus 0.25. So we're getting closer to that zero point. So if you want to try and <clears throat> keep your, your camber at what you have determined to be your optimum, if it is at minus 0.4, then there's two ways you can do that. One way would be to just lower your your uh, or increase your static camber by a quarter of a degree so instead of at minus two you would go to minus 2.25 so let's just do that let's just go back here and we're just going to reset this and we're going to put it at minus 2.25 save that and let's go back to our dynamics Change this back. So just reset my. So let's run that. Graph it, and so we were at minus 0.25, and now we're at minus 0.5. So we're close. So just by lowering our, or increasing our static camber by a quarter degree, now we've maintained the same. Um, camber at the higher G levels. Now the other way we could do this is I'm just going to go back here and set this back to minus two. So now we can run this again. We'll show that we're still at our same same position, so we were back at a, we should be at a quarter degree here, so that's where we're at. So the other way we can do this is we can start playing with our upper camber link. So if we move our upper camber link inward, this is going to increase the camber gain. So if I just move from the outer position to the inner position, I've changed my camber gain. Not a huge amount. Went from 0.14 to 0.1 or to 0.2, but the advantage of it is, is I haven't really changed my roll center a whole bunch, so I'm still at minus 0.5.75. So let's apply that, run it, 
and we should see this value is decreased. So we went from 0.25 to 0.3. Not a huge change, not a little change. So if we went one step further and, well, let's go two steps further. Let's lower, take two millimeters of shims out. So we're at the outermost position and we're two millimeters shim down. So now we've got 0.41 degrees of camber gain and we're at minus 0.4. So we have affected our roll center. We've raised our roll center up. We're still significantly lower than where we started. We were at minus one. So let's apply that. Close that and let's run it. And grab it. So now you can see we're down quite a bit more. So now we're down at minus 0.49. So we may have gone too far. So we may want to add that one millimeter shim, one millimeter shim back in. Let's just do that. Just see where we end up. So we're going to find that. Close that. Run it. And there we're at 0.4. So you can see we can get back to where we are. It's just a matter of the fact that you can't change one thing without affecting the other. So if you change your roll center, you're affecting your camber gain. Uh, the best way to change your uh, roll centers with having a minimal effect on the camber gain is to move the lower hinge gain. So if you do your adjustments in roll center, primary adjustments in roll center with your lower hinge pin shims that's the best solution and then you can tweak things with your upper camber link hope that answers your question